A few days ago, Home Assistant hosted their annual State of the Open Home Conference, where they basically gave us an insight into how things are going with the project so far, what they are currently working and focusing on, a recap of the year gone by, and then what their plans are for the Home Assistant project, as well as the various ecosystems and projects surrounding Home Assistant over the next year coming up as they look ahead to 2023. I thought it would be fun and interesting to recap the event and talk about some of the exciting new things to keep an eye out for over the next year. One of the first things that they talked about was how the project has grown over the last year by showing off some statistics. It was really pretty insane to see that Home Assistant has grown to the second largest open source project on GitHub with a huge 13,500 contributors, second only to Visual Studio Code, which is kind of ironic, right? It's like the tool that probably most developers are using to write code on, so that is a really huge achievement and it does show you the scale of the project. They also showed that they currently have 190,000 active installations of Home Assistant, which is just insane to think about when you consider that these analytics are opt-in only. The Home Assistant team actually estimates that this number is around three times larger, which would put it at roughly 550 to 600,000 installs, which is just mind-blowing. And it really shows you the scale of the project now as it just continues to grow and grow and is certainly no small-time hobbyist project anymore. One of the main things for me that was discussed and shown off at the event by Matthias that I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about was a new prototype and demo for the UI of the future. This was a sort of interactive demo that you can try out for yourself and give feedback on and is a reimagined way of creating the out-of-the-box dashboard and experience that is more user-friendly and intuitive to use. One of the biggest complaints I see from people getting into Home Assistant is that the standard dashboard and layout is a pain to use, and I can definitely see how it could be overwhelming and it isn't the nicest to look at when compared to some others, especially when you do have a larger amount of devices. I'm guessing that there will be two camps of people here. Those that will say, well, yeah, but it's an automation platform. Things should happen automatically, and if you need a dashboard, then you're doing it wrong. And then you will have people on the opposite side of that argument who like to control everything manually with their smartphone. It's okay, there is no judgment here. And I do agree that automation should and will happen where possible to do so. But there is always going to be times that you will have to do something manually, or you have guests over, or your partner just wants a freaking remote to do things manually, God damn it. And so why not have a nice user interface for those times where someone needs or wants to use one? Home Assistant is so far ahead in terms of other areas when looking at comparisons with other platforms that it probably makes a lot of sense to bring up one of their weaker areas, which is probably dashboards. This is an interactive demo, so go ahead and give it a try yourself. I will link it down in the description and give your feedback. But essentially they are going for the group by room strategy when it comes to devices, which I am personally a big fan of if you've watched any of my dashboard videos. And then they are iterating and making improvements on how you interact with those devices too and making it more cohesive. They also spoke about making the settings page more in line with what you would expect to be in a settings menu and bringing the device menu into its own location instead. All in all, a much better UI experience in my opinion than what we get with a standard install. Also, drag and drop confirmed. Another really big announcement came in the form of a new hire for Nabucasa called Mike Hansen. So you may remember a few months ago that I made a video on how to build a fully local and offline voice assistant that you can use with Home Assistant to control your lights and devices called Raspi. Mike was and is the creator of that project and is now joining the Home Assistant development team to work on building a voice assistant into Home Assistant that works even better and more easily for users. This would be a really huge addition to Home Assistant if we see native voice assistant capabilities added that users could take advantage of. You know, just plug in a microphone and speaker, enable a few options in the UI, and away you go controlling your devices with your voice in just a matter of minutes. Where the killer integration would be, in my opinion, however, 
is for ESP Home to get support for microphones too. That would really lower the cost of entry for people to add, you know, an ESP32 to every room that had a little speaker and a microphone attached that could be used for voice announcements as well as for voice control. I think that would be the really killer combination for me and just make it so much easier for everyone to use and that, in my opinion, seems like the natural choice. Home Assistant announced that this year is going to be called the Year of the Voice, which is going to be their overall focus for 2023. So I think we are going to see some huge things happening on the voice control front inside of Home Assistant. Speaking of ESP Home also, it was announced that on stream that ESP Home now also has support for the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which is a first for the project as traditionally only ESP devices have been supported so far, as the name would suggest. This move gives users and consumers another choice when it comes to building devices with microcontrollers and more choice is always more good. So now you can take your Raspberry Pi Pico W boards and build out your own devices and sensors just as easily as you would with an ESP8266 or ESP32 all with very little experience and no real coding knowledge required. Really cool to see that. Oh, also, does this mean ES Pi Home? They also talked quite a bit about Matter and some of the developments in Matter and how Home Assistant is going to be working with Matter. Unfortunately, there was no sort of time frame or release date given for when we're gonna see Matter added to Home Assistant, which I was really hoping to see, but they also did talk about the Sky Connect and Home Assistant Yellow and how that all ties into Matter. So make sure to check out the Matter section if you want a bit more technical information about how it's going to work. Finally, it was also really cool to see a light shone on Home Assistant from an accessibility standpoint, where there was a talk given by Steve Repture on the things Home Assistant is doing and could be doing better from an accessibility standpoint. Now, I'm fortunate enough that accessibility isn't something I've had to deal with so far in my life, but I do think this is an important topic for people, if not now, then possibly in the future, so it's worth doing these things right. If you want to check out some of the things Steve is doing and you think you can help out with some accessibility standpoints, then I will leave some links down in the description for everywhere you can help out. And that was everything major that was talked about at the Home Assistant conference. What was your favorite thing they discussed and what do you think is going to be the game changer or the biggest change we will see over the next year? For me, I was really excited about the voice stuff as that is a question I get all of the time is if Home Assistant has a way of using voice commands and it does, but it could be a lot better, which is what I would think we are going to see improved over the next year. So yeah, really stoked about that one. Anyways, that's about going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.